Amen. 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 But for the word tells us all good and perfect gifts come from the Lord. And to be alive today is a gift. Anybody believe that? To be alive. You might heard me say to be alive today is a gift. Amen. And a gift only that comes from the Lord. Could you stand with me? Isn't that gift called a hand break this morning? Hey, hey. Word tells us, it said, I will sing of the mercy of the Lord. Did anyone have a song in their heart this morning? The word said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, not just for today, not just for an hour, but forever with my mouth. With my mouth, I will make known the faithfulness to all generations. With my mouth, I will make known his faithfulness to all generations. That means you got to speak a lot of confidence. Amen? You got to let people know that's around you that God is good. Amen? Maybe my circumstances are not good, but God is good. Amen?
for those who uh, don't know yet, it comes as a as the greatest disappointment and torment. It is revealed when it is revealed. God offers His secret to all people, and it is the obligation of everyone who knows it and share it with many other people as they can. And let me just interject something at this point, because if we think about the great commission that God gave us, that Jesus gave us, go ye. Uh, who was he talking to? He was talking to his disciples. You are his disciples. So he is talking to us. The secret that God gives uh, to the righteous is a secret that he wants the whole world to share. The greatest uh, desire of God is a day when secret and secret the righteous share will no longer be secret. It will be the truth that is known. You have a secret. We need to share that secret with others. Thank you. Shall we pray? Lord, grant your mind always and everywhere share the blessed secret of your love with everyone we meet. Make us a true disciple of yours. Spending your love, spreading your love and gospel throughout our world. And Father, please forgive me for being less than authentic as a disciple maker. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We got a little sermonette from Michael. <laughs> then we went down to Sunday school and Will just fed us sumptuously in Sunday school. And somebody even said Deacon Farrell is the backup preacher today because Pastor Buck is not here. I think we just got a sample of, of, of a sermonette right there. Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> amen. Um, God is good. God is good. Something is just resounding in my spirit. I got to get out. Michael came up here talking about today being a gift from God. Amen? Amen. We opened up the worship. And I remember somebody sharing something with me that said, yesterday is the past. We call it history. And tomorrow is the future. And that's a mystery. But today is a gift. And that's why we call it the present. Amen. 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 Let's go get somebody with us today. Yeah. See, today was not promised to us. And God gift wrapped the present for us and gave us this day. The question is, what are we going to do with this day? Amen. So, so then Deacon Pearl comes up here with God making his secret known to us that we have to reveal to those who don't know. Um, so, how do somebody? Come on. Some things your folks just don't know. And we're being given our salvation so we can share it with them. Amen. Amen. Just have to get that out. At this time, we're going to have a um, recognition of some graduates in our midst. They are graduating to, from the interdenominational theological center, as you can see on the screen. Uh, screen, screen. Congratulations to Deacon Alphonse Coleman. Deacon Coleman, would you stand? Uh,
see the minister Hunter is going to come up and give us a few words about what they endured, what they went through, what the program is about, and maybe somebody out here may want to be able to participate in that. We're going to get some information right now. Hello, and thank you. I just want to give you a moment um, to share what uh, Deacon Coleman and Reverend Mills and I experienced through this theological program. And so if you are hungry and thirsting for the word of God, this is a great opportunity for you. If you want to continue your Christian education through ITC. And the person that's in charge of this wonderful program is Pastor Gay. And so we have a satellite site right here in Anchorage. Now I want to let you know the course is nine months and it meets one Saturday every week, and that's four hours. So you will have to sacrifice a Saturday each week, four hours of studying the Word of God. And what we have been studying, what we in our studies, the Old Testament, the New Testament, pastoral care, the history of the black church, how to create and preach a sermon, the philosophy of religion, and much more. And I want to say also it's a way for you to come fellowship with your sister churches, form relationships outside of greater friendship with other believers in the Anchorage community. And so if you would like to sign up for this, we have forms uh, located in our church office. So Deaconess Coleman can give you the forms if you want to register. And I want to let you know the classes start March 6th. And so if you want any other information, please see Reverend Mills, Deacon Alphonse Coleman, or myself. And I also want to let you all know in May, we will be going down to Atlanta, Georgia, to walk across the stage to receive our certification. And so we just want to ask you, come on in. You know, two on the word for more, and that's what for you. But um, we just want to say thank you. And we're not doing this for ourselves, but we're doing this to advance the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. We're doing this to help our local church. We're doing this to help our pastor button, to equip the people of God for the mission of God. Amen. Come see, go tell. Hallelujah. <laughs> there was something that she just said, something about the sister churches. Amen. If Pastor Button was here, he'd ask the question, who are the most important people in our church right now? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. But I actually invited someone to church here. I stayed ever since Sunday school. They told me they weren't allowed to visit other churches. And I said, something wrong with that picture. I said, that's myself. I said, that's me. But any place that doesn't want you to go out and fellowship with other, it is bondage. Amen? And so we welcome visitors in our church. Amen? So we want to make our visitors feel welcome. If you are here today and you have never visited our church before, and you would like to stand and just be recognized, or we don't want to ask you 19 questions. You just want to introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and who invited you. We want to give you this opportunity at this time. Is there any visitors this morning? Amen. Amen.
our time of fellowship to make sure we greet our visitors properly. Amen.
comes up to conduct the, uh, the offering, this is the few minutes you have to check in on Facebook so that folks know where you are. Maybe you can make some invitations. It's not too late to get in the ship. Amen. Everybody want to say amen? Amen. amen. So here comes Minister Hunter. She's going to make the appeal for our giving. And as the pastor would say, if you were here, the Lord does not need your money. But he gives us an opportunity to be generous for the work of the ministry. Minister Hunter. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? amen? Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. And he loves us. And we love him. Lord, we just want to um, just take the time to think on the Lord right now. How he's been our provider. How God is our all in all. He is the sufficient one. I just thank God for Jesus. As our earth has come. We just want to just thank God with our offerings and our tithes. We thank God, Lord, for everything that you've given us, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that we can give back, Lord. We just thank you for your kingdom, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, we just ask you to use what we have to better your kingdom, Lord. We just thank you for the giver today, Lord. We thank you for the one that wants to give but don't have to give, Lord. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to just give unto us, Lord. And, and we just say thank you, Lord, and as we give back to you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can give. Hallelujah. Amen. Would the church say amen? Amen.
even as bright shining as the sun, we know less time to praise his name than when we first begun. To God be the glory. Amen. As you can see, our pastor is not here this morning in, in body, but he is with us in spirit. Our first lady and the family are still here holding down the media. Amen. church uh, out of state uh, due, to, due to be homeboying of one of those members. And who wouldn't serve a God who provides a shepherd like that? Amen. 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 So let's keep our pastor and the family lifted up in prayer. Let's pray for his traveling mercies. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things we'll be praying for as you are now extended the invitation to come to the altar, to come to the throne of grace in the time of prayer. The Bible tells us that man should always pray and not to faint. So when you're invited, it's not always about your issue. Maybe there's someone you want to pray for. Maybe there's someone you want to pray with. So we extend this invitation right now from wherever you are in the sanctuary. Why don't you come to the altar? Why don't you lift up the name of someone who needs to be prayed for, even if it's not yourself? Amen. God says, come to me. All ye who are weary and heavy laden and burdened down, I will give you rest. That's God's promise. Let's come and take him up on his promise. Amen? Amen. Mr. McKinnon's going to come now and lead us to the throne of grace.
I'm staying in your will. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Good day, church. Good day, church. Good day, church. Glory. First, I want to give honor to our pastor who's not here in our absence. Uh, but first, allowing me to have this opportunity in order to stand before family to bring forth this message. It's not something that I take lightly. If I begin to seem as if I'm getting emotional, I am. Because I take this to heart. I don't take it lightly. I take it very seriously. Because the life that I live, I want it to mean something. I want it to be something. All right. Not for you necessarily here on earth, but to glorify my God, which is in heaven. Which gave his life for me to have this opportunity. Secondly, I want to thank my wife. We talk about Valentine's Day. True enough, God is our giver of every day. But he has blessed me with a woman that is after his own heart. Amen. That has helped me to learn and show and receive and give love the way that Christ loved the church. Amen. I thank you. Thirdly, I want to thank you all, my church family. You all give me support. You give me correction as well as you help sharpen me, especially you brothers in Christ. I thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Brother Steve, thank you for coming out. Steve, He's like a brother of mine. We have history, we go back to golden days. And uh, his wife, Sandra, who's not here to be with us right now, but she's my little sis. She's our tormentor. <laughs> <laughs> when we get out of line, we know who to go to in order to set us straight. Uh, I'm not gonna be long. I'm going to give the word as the word has been given unto me. And I pray that your mind, heart, and your spirit and soul will be open to receive. That when you do, do depart, that as you walk out that door, that you're hanging on to something and not allowing the adversary to strip you of his word. Because we all know he's out to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can distract you once you walk across that doorway, he's going to do that. But if you could hang tight to his unchanging hand, you will be okay. Father God, our most gracious and heavenly Father, Father God, I just come unto you right now praying, Father God, that you remove me, Lord, and allow your Holy Spirit to come forth, Lord God, and, and deliver that message in which you would have unto your flock, your children, Lord God. Hide me behind thy veil. Keep me, Lord, but bless them. <laughs> Allow your amazing grace just to flow. Holy Spirit, fill this place now. Move along here among every heart, every soul, Lord, because we are your children. We have come in order to give thee honor unto thee, Lord, as humble as we know how. So allow the meditation of my heart, the words of my mouth, be acceptable, Father God, in thy sight. For I am your servant. I want 
to stay in the church. So, Father God, I thank you, I praise you, I glorify you, and bless us in Jesus' name. Oh, amen. Amen. I'm coming out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. And I will be starting at verse 1, going through verse 6. If you're there, say amen. If you need to say old type. Okay. Old type, I show. And if you wouldn't mind standing for the reading of the word, giving respect unto the word of God. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word is God. It reads, now coming out of the New King James Version. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made by things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered him, offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift, of his gift, and through it he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And here's our verse for today, which impacted my spirit, which states, but without faith, it is impossible yeah. to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder yeah. of those who diligently seek him. Thank you for standing for the word. As I have found out that I was to bring forth the message I pray Lord what would you have me say give me that word in which you would give, have me to share with your your children and in doing so there wasn't a quick response God does not move according to my time my time is not his time. My ways are not his way. But my will still lies with him. Yeah. My hope is in his hand. Yeah. Because as I continue to pray, I, I waited. I waited. I waited. But also as I prayed, his word came to me. He said, ask. And you shall receive. He said, Seek, you shall find. And he said, Knock, and the door shall be open. So as I began to ask, okay, Father, I'm asking. But as I'm also asking, I'm seeking, I'm flipping the scriptures. What is it you have for me? Lord? What is it that you have for me? So I'm flipped. And this scripture comes across. But he also says, knock and the door shall be opened. Mm -hmm. Now you know we've been studying, the pastor has been doing this, 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 this series of uh, right now faith. Okay, right now faith. So, all right, Lord, how am I to tie this in with what the pastor is preaching? And in doing so, things begin to formulate 
and come at me in different ways and different measures. And I'm like, okay, I got this. I understand you. And I got this, and I understand you. But how am I to put this together? How am I to formulate this rule? So he had me go back up. And he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. The evidence of things not seen. And that led me over to Romans 8.28. And it said, and we know that all things work together for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay, Father. Hope. I know you called me because I wouldn't be standing up here. You know I ran for 10 years. And I was miserable until I came back up to you. So I know where my hope lies, and I understand in order for me to have peace that I've got to be in your will. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what is your purpose for me right now? What is your purpose? I had got a response to that. I hadn't got a response. But the Holy Spirit came to me and said, Be still. Wait upon him. Just be still and wait. Then another version of the Holy Spirit came unto me, and, and, and he was like, Just stand. You don't know nothing else to do, but stand. So I'm like, okay. And as the days began to dwindle down, still wasn't able to put everything together. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm still praying. I'm still seeking through scriptures. I'm reading things and I, I, I'm having ideas. I have ideas. But I don't want my will to be done. I want yours. I need you. You are the sustainer of my soul, so I, I can't step outside of your will right now in order to try to give your children your word. I need you right now. I need you. So as I begin to continue to read over there, she said, for by if the elders obtain a good testimony, now, again, everybody in which they're going to name through here is of the Old Testament. It's of the Old Testament. They walked with God. They were obedient unto the word of God. So I'm praying, Lord, I know I was once a sinner, but I no longer cover that oldness of, 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 of sin because of your son Jesus. I am now a new creature. So as I move forward now, let's be. As being that new creature, I need you to guide me. Be that light unto my path. You are the light unto my path. You are the light. You are the light into my path. I can't make it without you. But it also revealed to me that those of old, they were obedient. They lived the lives. They didn't just live the life of being obedient. The way that they lived their lives showed their obedience. So I'm like, Father, help me. I don't just want to be a reader or a doer of the word. I want to be one that, that's able to show on, through how I live that my life is that glorified to you in order to build the kingdom. So verse 3 says, By faith we understand that works were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen 
were not made of things which are visible or are visible. So I'm praying on this. I'm like, okay, Father, I understand your word created the heavens, created the earth. You created me. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And what thoughts I do have, you instill them within. So I'm not nothing without you. Because even my dreams that I have, you're instilling them within me. So how do I move forward? Through your grace, through your mercy, through your direction. he tells me in Jeremiah 1, before I formed you in the mother's womb, I knew you. Amen. Before you were born, I sanctified you. So regardless of what I went through and what I'm going to go through, God knows me. He has a plan for me. It's for me to submit unto his will and seek him in all that I do. All right. It's for me to be obedient unto him so that one day and one time that I might be able to win one soul unto Christ. Because I told him that's my desire, is to serve <coughs> you and to be able to bring those that are lost back into the flock. Right. Yeah. Where in that due day and time, we all will be able to rejoice together. And as I stated earlier, I mean, I also dropped down to Jeremiah 29 where it says, well, I know the thoughts, I know the thoughts that I have, I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. I know this isn't all falling, flowing the way that I want it. But it's flowing the way what she's given it to me. Amen. It's flowing the way that he's given it to me. I'm not a good public speaker, but you get me one-on-one, -on -one, I can talk to your ears off. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk your ears off. But in doing so, what I'm, I'm just going to get down to the meat of the matter. I'm sorry. What, what, what has got me is, is that in verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Okay. We've been talking about faith. Okay. And faith is, again, as we read, it's the substance of things hoped for. Okay. And the evidence of things unseen. But in order to have faith, like Pastor said before, you've got to have belief. You've got to believe. So many times as we be going through life, as I'm reading this, as I'm out witnessing day on day, because we should be doing that every day. Wherever we go, we are representatives of Christ that we are to be witnessing. Not always in word, but in our actions, how we live. So, God was touching on my heart. It is impossible to please him. For those who come to God must believe that he is. So I'm like, Father, I believe you. I believe in you. I was not of times of old. So I wasn't able there in order to witness the, the, the things in which, in which your disciples had witnessed. 
of you raising the dead, of you healing the woman with the issue of blood, as you as you uh, uh, heal the, the man of leprosy. I said, but as I read your word and I take your word for what it is, I'm believing. I, I believe. I believe with every ounce of me, with my heart, my soul, my sweat. I'm believing it. Because for you to have had a son that gave his life for me, and for me to have an understanding and knowledge that I know now, that he gave his life for me, that's love. And I've never known love like that. But that's love. And for you to love me to where he gave your son for me, that's sacrifice. That's a sacrifice at one time that I didn't think I would be able to do or give. But I've come to learn and within his word that if my brother hurts, I'm to hurt. If my brother is rejoicing, I'm to rejoice with him. It's not for me to see you struggling and not help. You see, the more and more that I'm diving off into the word of God, I'm saying more and more that it's not about me. Because the more that I give, the more that God is allowing me to receive. And I don't mean just in finances. I mean just in, 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 in things in general, in my time, the way I, 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 I pray to God and, and reveal myself that I want to be in your service. Place somebody before you where I may be able to bless them or help them according to your will. You have to be careful what you pray for. But you also have to be careful with your heart when you pray. Yes. Because if your heart is not in the right position or place, don't expect for those prayers to be answered. Amen. Because your motives are wrong. You see, God knows your heart. And that's what he's going to judge you off of, your heart. You know, we, I, I used to say, hmm, I can't do this right now because I'm just unable. But I was able. Mm. So I didn't do something because I didn't want to, I didn't find or feel as if it was necessary. I was being selfish. And that's even when the Holy Spirit directed me to. So in essence, it was like, Lord revealed to me, he's like, okay, how can I bless you when you say, use me, Lord, but when I call upon you, you say, oh, not, no, not me. <laughs> so my blessing shrank. Because my outstretched hand was closed, hmm. wanting to receive, but not willing to give. So as he began to open up my eyes and let me know, look, I can't, I can't bless you if you're not willing to bless somebody else. Say that. Because he said, you know, he told me, he said, you know, how can you say you love me who you do not see, but you, 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 you can't love your brother that you do see? So you lying. You lying. So that made me back up. Oh. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> Forgive me of my shortcomings. Thank you for removing those scales from my eyes, for allowing me to see this the way in which you were looking at it. Now I can get on track with you. Yes. Let me turn from that and let me proceed or try again. And in doing so,
he says that, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is God. But then he says, he who, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Okay, I said, all right, God, how am I to do this? God said in his word, can't say words that right now, but he does say in his word, to try me. He says, try me, just test me, put me to the test. So I'm like, okay, Father, you said I could put you to the test, so I'm going to put you to the test. Allow me another opportunity in order to serve you. He did. And in doing so, I had another opportunity to bless somebody else. So instead of me just keeping and, and, and not being obedient unto the word of God and seeing you all as brothers and sisters in Christ, seeing you hurting and going through struggles and, 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 and you're telling your story, but I'm saying, oh, I'm going to pray for you, but I'm not trying to help fulfill your need. I had a change of heart. I listened for one to what you said. Not only did I listen to your cry, I felt it. Because as you bring in my brother and sisters in Christ, I was able to understand and feel the anguish and, 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 and the discomfort that you were going through. So that didn't make me comfortable because you was uncomfortable. And then when I began to actually hear or, 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 or as the Holy Spirit revealed a need to me, I didn't have to wait in order for you to ask. I did what I needed to do as being a brother or sister in Christ and provided the need. And in doing so, God has blessed me immensely. But saints, what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that we have we need to look at our hearts. We need to look at our hearts and the things that we say and that we do. Lord, I surrender all unto thee. Lord, I worship you. I praise you. Do we really? Or are we just giving lip service? For all that God has done for us, excuse me, for me, because I can't speak for you. I can't speak for you. But for all that God has done for me in my time, even when I was out there on that other side of that track, and I think about how he has brought me through I can't help but give him the praise. Amen. I can't help but give him the glory. And I sure enough can't help but give him the honor. I listen to songs and I say, Lord, help me to apply this to my life. I listen to his words because, and I say songs as well, because a lot of times his word is in his, are in these songs. And we sing these songs day in, day out, but we don't take heed to what we are saying and what we're saying. Life and death lies in the power of our tongues. You can either speak life unto yourself or someone else or you're speaking damnation. I prefer to speak life. That's why when you see me, I'm smiling. I don't smile as much as Brother Pigman over here. You know? <laughs> I'm not allowed to say either, but I understand his joy. Yes. Because since I've received Christ and I've truly given him my life, there is no greater joy that I've ever experienced. Yeah. As well as peace. When he said he will supply my every need, <laughs> that's putting it mildly. 
because he has supplied so many needs for me that I didn't even think or realize that I needed it. Saints, time is now. Time is right now. <laughs> And I'm not saying you to get that, that, that this is you. But I know I've done it. And I've, I've, I've truly asked God to forgive me for it when I've caught myself. But just seek him. Seek him earnestly. He's waiting there for you. He's waiting to give you the desires of your heart. But he wants your heart to be right. Amen. Yeah. God's not going to bless you with materialistic things or even the financial things huh. if you're not willing to share that with others. Amen. 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 God gives you and provides your need more than what you could ever imagine. But when you're not using it in the right manner to share with those <laughs> that are in need to, to give, to give cheerfully, yeah. mm. Come on willingly, now. Ungrudgingly, if you haven't begun to do that, you haven't experienced the full. Oh, you haven't experienced the full grace of God as of yet, and His mercy. Yes, yes. <clears throat> because it's only by His grace and mercy that we are able to be up and doing what we're doing, but not to give Him the glory, the honor, and the praise within that. What have we accomplished? Nothing but half. But through his grace yeah. and his mercy, we can do all things. He said when he left that all power lies within the Father's hands and in Jesus' hands. But Jesus said, when I depart, you will be able to do as I do, but you will also do greater. But we can't do that if we don't know the word. If we don't get into the word and diligently seek him and pray to him on a consistent basis, go through the pages of the Bible seeking him out. And then when, when, when you haven't done that enough, then you go and you knock at his door through prayer. When you're on your knees and you're praying in order to seek him, that's knocking at his door. But we have to be patient and wait on him. Remember, his time is not our time. Our time is not his. He's not going to give you that right now, always. Sometimes he will. But again, he sees your heart. God is good. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In times of trouble, he is that shield. When you need cover, he is that comfort. Over in the book of Psalms, he said, he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Yes. It also goes on to say that he will make your enemies your footstool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. If he's gone to this extent in order to show you how much he loves you, and how much he wants you to believe and trust in him. What is there not to take that step of faith? That must receive step. I wouldn't care if it was like a baby's first step. It's a step. It's a step. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. He showed you showing him that you're moving. Pastor says it all the time. When we pray and not believe, we have to act upon it. Believing is acting upon. 
We're not praying for it and just, okay, Lord, I'm waiting for it to happen. No, you have a part to play. Mm -hmm. If you don't activate by your words or by your actions showing God that this is what you pray for, this is what you want, and you preparing yourself to get it, don't expect to get it. Because you're not believing. You're not visualizing. You don't see yourself with what you're praying for. It could be that sickness. It could be that job. It could be that car. It could be that money, that bank that you're looking for. But when you get it, are you utilizing it in the right manner? Are you sharing it? You see somebody need a ride, are you offering them that ride for that for them, when you get that new car? Or is it too good for them in order to get into it? Come on now. I'm speaking the truth. Yeah, you are. Because I've done it. We all done it. A contrite heart is not what God is looking at. It's not what he appreciates. He appreciates a giving and an open heart. Yes. Amen. Again, he gave his only begotten. Brother Ken came and got me this morning and, and, and in order to help him with the situation. And I mean, all I can do is sit and listen, but all I can do is just give the words of God. God loves you. If he didn't love you, the one verse in which he said he knew, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. That whoever shall believe on him yeah, yeah. <sighs> shall not perish but have everlasting life. Like I told him, like, hey, if you know this, listen to, listen, pay attention to the words that you're saying. You don't know why you're here. Yes, I'll tell you why you're here. Because God has his hand on it. He's brought you here for a reason, for a purpose. But, you know what? But is good. But but is not God. Because God can. God will. God does. At least my God does. See, like I told him, I said, you know, God loves you, and he has you here for a reason, in order for me to give you the words. But the final decision is up to you. I can lead you towards that path, but only you can take that first step. I know you're confused and you're struggling, but those things within your mind that are saying you're not worthy, people are looking at you because you don't have. The things that you've done in your past. But once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you've received him, those are things of old. Oh, you are a new creature. You have to believe that. And when you believe that and receive that within your mind, then things, they've turned. They've already turned once you've received him. But again, you have to activate that. You gotta move upon it. You gotta show Christ that you trust him, that you believe in his word. Yes, things aren't always gonna be easy. They are always not gonna be straight and narrow. But he can make it that way. If you believe. If you believe. As I, told, as, as, as I close, again, God gave his only begotten. He's not going to give him again. He sacrificed his life. He was beaten, sped upon, kicked. Clothes. Lodge gambled off. It's well beyond recognition. Dragged from judgment hall to judgment hall. See, you can. But he never said a mumbling word. 
He knew what was coming, what he had to go through. Not for his own, but for me. For us. <coughs> so that he could stand between the Father and me and shield me of all my wrong. And he's doing the same for you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he hung. He hung his head and he died. But as the old song said, that wasn't the end of the story. All right, amen. Yeah, yeah. Three days later, his father moved that stone. He got up. Yeah. He rose from the dead. He was he really wasn't dead. He was resting, as he put it. I'm just, he's not dead, he's just asleep. <coughs> and he rose with all power. All power. And like I said, he stands interceding on your and my behalf. <laughs> And not only is he interceding, he said, when I go away, I'm going to leave a comfort. I'm going to leave a comforter. Someone that will help you. So if I'm not able to answer, my comforter is right there that will direct you. Saints, I know this is slow. But it's what I got to give. Amen. 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 Jesus loves you. Amen. And it's not all just because I know the Bible told you so.
Now is the opportunity in order to come and get that reestablished. Ask God for forgiveness. For walking away, for turning your back, and doing the things, or backsliding. God is forgiven. We have to learn to forgive ourselves. Because God said those things that we have done, He has cast them as far away from the east is to the west to be mentioned no more. So you tell that adversary that when he comes to try to bring that remembrance into your mind, that he's alive. Tell him, get thee behind me, Satan. Call him up by his name. You have the power to do that. Stop sitting back idly, allowing him to attack you. You have authority. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. For those of you that may need prayer, we have a prayer team. I'm part of it. But we're more than willing to pray with you. To intercede on that behalf of whatever that need may be. Will there be one?
Bar rehearsal will be canceled on Saturday. So please come out to Thursday's bar rehearsal. Amen. Amen. GFBC has been invited to share in celebration at New Seasons 14th church slash pastoral anniversary on Friday, February. Friday, this coming Friday. Mass choir will minister one selection. Attire is all black. Dr. Kim Patterson is the guest speaker. Amen. Amen. GFBC Assimilation New Members Class will be held on Saturday, February 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the fellowship hall. We welcome all members, new and long time. This class is for everyone, amen? amen? Attention ladies, please join us on Friday, February 28th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. as we pray, plan, and put into action ideas and goals for the GFBC Women's Ministry. All ladies are encouraged to attend. Child care will be provided. GFBC Men's Gathering was, amen, on Saturday, February 29th at the Fairview Recreation Center from 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. All men, please join us as we discuss ways we can improve our church, amen. The Betty Davis African American Summit will be held on Saturday, February 29th at Bartlett High School from 9 a.m. till 7 p.m. See the flyer downstairs for a list of activities and speakers. Our GFBC Young Adult Ministry 2020 kickoff bowling event will be held on Saturday, March 7th at 5 p.m. at Center Bowl. That's 3717 Minnesota Drive. Please see Sister Lupe to sign up for more information. Raise your hand. Amen. Yeah. Amen. As always, please join us for our corporate prayer and Bible study every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday school every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Also corporate prayer every Sunday at 9.15 a.m. Amen. Amen. Those are your announcements and have a blessed week. And we have a special announcement by Reverend Pinkney. Amen. Amen. This goes out to all the married couples in the building and in the house on on Saturday, the 22nd, uh, we have our uh, marriage ministry starting at 1800 hours, 6 o'clock for you uh, non-military personnel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm finally cordially invited to join us for our marriage ministry to strengthen and gird up marriage. Amen? Amen. 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 Give glory and honor unto God to honor his duty. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to get up here and sound like Reverend Pinkney. <laughs> oh, see, our hearts and minds are clear. We've heard uh, the announcement that us govern ourselves accordingly. Let us uh, keep our pastor in, in our prayers as he is traveling. And we've had good church, so let us stand and dismiss because somebody messed it up. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The scripture says that men shall know that ye are my disciples because ye love one another. Be the light, be the only Jesus that somebody sees this week. And before you leave, hug somebody and tell them I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you.